welcome you to a SaaS Global Forum Tech Talk. Here's your host, Chris Hemmedinger. Welcome back to Tech Talks. I'm here with my next guest, SaaS icon, Rick Langston. Rick, thanks for coming out on the program. Uh, no, SaaS icon, <laughs> that's what you click on to start SaaS. Of course, well, I click on you. <laughs> thanks for joining us. Rick, you've uh, been with SaaS for, I'm not gonna say how long, a long time. Uh, I consider you to be the steward of the SaaS programming language. Uh, you have your hands in pretty much everything that goes on there. It has exploded over the past few releases. So many new things built into the SaaS programming language. How do you keep up? How do you keep adding all those things and keep the integrity of the language? In oh. We have uh, the, the language review board in-house in at SAS, and we have representatives from a lot of different groups, and we try to look at what the new features are that are coming in so we can make comments and say, well, this is, doesn't really look as sas like as we'd like to see. And we work with the different groups to ensure the integrity of the SAS language. And I have uh, proc writers come to me, hey, I want to use this new syntax, and I say, no, 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 you don't want to do that. Let's do it this way. And so we give gentle advice to ensure the integrity. Which everybody follows, all, of course, all the mm -hmm. time, I'm sure, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 9.4 is coming out very soon, and new language features have been added as well. You're, you've come on to show us some of the cool things. Yes, mm -hmm. and these are ones from, from my group, the core systems. We, we operate, if you remember the inverted triangle, we're down in that second part, and, and these are all things from our group, uh, and things that we made sure complied properly with uh, the SAS language. Of course, and they're okay. things that people have been asking for. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because people do ask, for language enhancements all the time. Is Absolutely, that right? yes. That's where ballot, of course, is a lot of where those things come from. So, yes, so we've got three of them we'd like to talk about today. Okay, let's, let's get into that. Okay, and they are the zip access method. This has been, we've been asked for this for many years, and so our group uh, developed that, and I'm excited to talk about it. There's do sub L, a personal project of mine uh, that I'll be giving a paper about here at SAS Global Forum, and lockdown, which is something for SAS administrators to ensure security of files. So those are the three things I'd like to talk about today. Okay, let's get into it. Now here we're going to see a screenshot of, uh, of, of the uh, display manager, and I'm showing about the zip access method. Now the zip access method reads and writes zip files. Okay. People have been asking for that for a long time, including on MVS. Yes, it's available for MVS as well. This particular piece right here I want to show, we'll do a control one to oh, control not, one. Not, 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 not on this one. on this sorry, one, okay. Sorry, I All right, so I'm just going to use yeah. my pointer here to see. Uh, in, in our first set of statements here, we have this new mm -hmm. option you haven't seen before, the member equals. That's the member of the zip file that we wish to read. And so the member equals option, it will read data from the individual member you've asked for. Uh, you can also use the way that you may have been used to in the past with the parenthetical options as we see here. Uh, here is a case where we're using yet another new option. Now this is one where the data step folks, they, uh, I bent their ear, please do this for me. And so we have the new memvar option in the in file statement where you can pick a member of any kind of directory such as a zip file. Okay, so a zip file in that case just looks like a directory, it almost yes. looks like a, 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 a file ref with folders in it, and it's, yes. you, you can navigate it just that way. Exactly, just like a directory would be, just like a catalog, anything that's a directory concept, it, our zip looks the same way. Now here is the actual output where we can just, just to prove it in case you don't want to believe me, you had that look of question yeah. in your eye. It is absolutely, <laughs> this is what we get. And we, you, this is, what you see is what you get in the case. We read these records. Uh, from the zip file and shows that it does work. And again, parenthetical option. You choose whatever method you wish to use. Now, one thing just for uh, people to see, you can, you can use the memvar option and it'll traverse through all the different members. You just pick up the names you want and traverse it, just like you've been able to do in the past with, you mentioned directories. This is probably what people have used uh, directory access for in the past. Memvar is, is gonna be great for that. I'm very excited to see that feature made available. I can imagine lots of uses for reading and writing zip files. Do you have an example from customers about how they, how they intend to use this kind of thing? The, well, customers just all the time, that's the way I just in fact had the question asked to me earlier yeah. today. They are just looking for space saving and time saving when they create a, a file with a lot of data in it, they want to compress it down nicely and bring it up to another system to read. So that's as much as anything what it is, it's to save transfer time back and mm -hmm. forth. And zip is just a standard, it is. A standard representation everybody knows. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, here's a neat little thing you might not have seen with any of the others. You can use with the zip, uh, with the parenthetical option, you can have multiple levels in the name. That's really neat. Because oh. that's, uh, that's what a zip file can do. It can store all the levels of a, of a directory. Is that a, is that a standard? Um Method does that work with directories as well, or, you know, or, or that's a special good, special for zip? Good question mm. you ask. Actually, I'm I'm going to be honest and say I don't know. I'll have to go try <laughs> it afterwards. But it does work for zip. I can tell <laughs> okay. you that. Okay. Okay. Next topic. Or yes, mm -hmm. I want to talk about call execute yeah. versus do sub l. Do sub l is a new function that I introduced in 9.3 m2, and what do sub l grew out of the proc stream project I was working on, mm -hmm. and also some customer requests. Mm -hmm. It's and I'm doing a paper about it uh, tomorrow, and it's called submitting code on the side. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happens when you try using call execute, as we see in this example, is that call execute stacks the code to be run after the data step you're in. So this particular example, we're expecting that this macro is going to create the variable, the macro variable x, y, z, but it won't do so until after this data step completes. That's the problem with call execute. The it's too late at yes. that point. You're, you're right. intending for it to run too, in line, but too it's early. Too, too, too early. early. Too yes. early. <laughs> Call execute hasn't run yet, and so we're trying to get the value of that macro variable before it's been created. So it's uh, it's too early. Yes. So we get the value of Q when we expected uh, different. We expected the value of A. Now the slide. Notice it's a sleight of hand that slide changes, and the only thing the only thing that changed in all this was the use of do sub L instead of call execute and the right answer, which is we wanted the do it macro to be executed immediately and have that macro variable be changed immediately. So we've got it on time instead of being too late or too early. Now, I was talking to a customer about do sub L and uh, they were trying to figure out why it's called do sub L. They were trying to read into the, like it stood for something like, uh, but, but, okay. but really it's probably simpler than that, isn't it? It, it means do submit. <laughs> and the L means here is a line of SAS code because there's do sub that doesn't, that gives you a file ref and do sub L says submit the line. Okay, so, so do sub is sort of a, a and include on the side, and, yes. and do sub L is a, a statement on the side of uh, line. You could think of it like that. The do sub L is here's a line of SAS code right okay. here versus yeah. right. The other is like a percent include. In fact, internally, just as a little secret between <laughs> you and me, uh, it is a percent include is what it does internally. Okay, good to know. I won't tell anybody. All right. <laughs> okay, no, yeah, we assume nobody's watching, right? <laughs> and we can, in fact, See what we have. This is another example with PROC SQL, where PROC SQL uses a writes into macro variables, in this case, into and dis to. Same problem. You call execute, you're not going to get the results you expect. But and, and in fact, indeed, we these macro variables that are read in turn out to be missing values. And so you just got to do do sub L. Do sub L. Exactly the same code as before. And these macro variables in three and dis three, differently named this time to make sure I don't get confused. They do come out with what we expect, the values of 10 and 5 as we expected. So cool. it's that's highly recommend people start to use DoSabel. Please start using it. You've got it in 9.3 M2 already. Yes, I've started using it. Excellent. Uh, now lockdown. Okay. Oh, I, I got one more thing oh, to say. One more thing. We, okay. Yes, and this is this is really cool. My my, my buddy and colleague uh, Mike Rhodes from mm -hmm. Westat wrote a paper about what he called the macro function sandwich, and mm -hmm. it was a really neat paper. And I told him I've got something it's it, that will Im improve it and simplify it to make it a macro on the a macro sandwich on the Adkins diet mm -hmm. without the bread. <laughs> so his and his more complicated macro became something much simpler with the use of do sub L. I just wanted to put that extra plug in. That's great. I'm sure Mike appreciated it. Too. Okay, you yeah. mentioned lockdown. Yes, yeah. we're with, with lockdown. Lockdown is a new feature implemented by people in our staff. And we had the issue of administrators saying, look, we have these files that we don't want our users to get access to when they're, say, using Enterprise Guide. Mm -hmm. And we, we want to control what they can get access to. And so we added the new lockdown option in version 9.4. And it can be implemented, it, it can be used as simply as we see here with the mm -hmm. lockdown option. What happens is you define in your auto exec the different live refs and mm -hmm. file refs that you want to permit, mm -hmm. that you want your users to be able to use, and nothing else other than what you've specified mm -hmm. will be available to those users. So they cannot the stray from the path. Exactly. They've got to stay within that path. Mm -hmm. And so that's 
That, and so here's an example of where users are trying to do some of those things, some where they're going to access it properly, where they may not access it properly, and we will get some nasty grams back <laughs> if they try to do the things they shouldn't. So you know, we get invalid because it's not in the list of accessible paths. So, we, so the, the administrator can have comfort in knowing they only access what they're supposed to. I should also point out that we also disable certain things like the Java object. We have to disable that because you can do a lot of things right, behind those are Scenes. Those are hooks into a whole other environments yes. that uh, are outside of SAS's yes. control. So just close the gate and absolutely, get. we have to do that. So we we've plugged the holes so the administrator uh, can breathe more easily, if you will. Okay. Well, that sounds like a great response to administrative concerns. Yes. It's great to see you in 9.4. Mm -hmm. Rick, yep. thanks for coming out and sharing the new language advancements My with us. My pleasure.